everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Darian and today we're going to be celebrating my booktube birthday. <laughs> so on May 3rd, which was a few days ago, was the two year anniversary since I posted my first video on this channel, which I can't believe it's already been two years. It feels like not that long ago that I started my channel, but it's already been two years. Time does not exist. <laughs> So I was trying to think of fun things I could do to celebrate my booktube birthday and I decided to do a Q&A because it's been I think over a year since my last Q&A so I thought it'd be fun to do another one and I recently got a lot more subscribers because you may have noticed maybe that my Heartstopper reaction video right now it has almost 12,000 views. <laughs> I cannot believe that. Obviously that is my most viewed video. Before that I had a video that had like 1.5k and now I'm almost at 12k views. Like I understand it's Heartstopper and everyone's obsessed with Heartstopper as am I, as we all know. I will be talking about Heartstopper again later. <laughs> but I wanted to thank everyone for all the love you've given that video and welcome to all my new subscribers who found me through that video. I am so happy to have you guys here. But whether you're a brand new subscriber or you were here since the beginning, I just wanna thank you all for all the support that you've shown me over the past two years. Whether you've seen one video or all of them or whether all you did was like a video or even comment or not even comment like even if you just watched 10 seconds and you were like cool whatever like I just appreciate each and every single one of you I mean so much has happened in my life in the past two years uh, a lot of <laughs> not so great things and the support that I've gotten from the booktube community has just been so amazing and I'm just so grateful to be here and for all the friends that I've made for all my besties you guys know who you are I'm just so grateful for it all so I wanted to say thank you and thank you again for all the love you've given the Heartstopper video I know some people did not give it some love <laughs> some people were mad at us but whatever those were in the minority so thank you to everyone who gave love to that video and before I get into the q and I did want to mention I feel weird mentioning this but I thought I would so I wasn't able to monetize that Heartstopper video because I used clips from the show and that's the first time I made a video like that so I don't know the exact rules of using clips from like TV shows because I know like other people make reaction videos and they're still monetized mine I guess I used clips for too long I don't know what I did so I wasn't able to monetize that video which is now pretty frustrating since it's doing so well so in my description I always have my coffee link in case anyone would like to make a small donation to my channel it would help me out a lot you by no means have to do that but if you enjoyed that video it would be something that I would really appreciate but again you do not have to do that I just thought I would mention it okay I feel weird so we're just gonna move on so on Instagram and Twitter I asked you guys for questions so let's start with Instagram I also did not prepare my answers before filming this which might be a mistake but we're just gonna go off the cuff here very spontaneous hopefully that's fine but the first question is from Anya and she asked what's a book booktube introduced you to and honestly pretty much every single book I've read in the past three or four years has been because of booktube booktube is pretty much where I get all my recommendations first it was for my friend Salma like when I just started getting back to reading I guess four years ago three or four years ago I got my recommendations from her but then I found booktube and that's where I started getting all my recommendations so like every book you see behind me and every book I've talked about on my channel has been basically from booktube so there's not really one like literally all of them <laughs> and then speaking of Salma she asked me how many times have you watched Heartstopper so far and she knows the answer to this so she's just asking me to expose me but at this time today's May what is the date today's May 6th which is actually two exactly two weeks since the show came out so I think I will have to watch the show again tonight to celebrate <laughs> its two week anniversary. But as of now, I've watched it 11 times. Hopefully by tonight it'll be 12. We'll see. Maybe editing me will put like how many times I've watched it at the time of editing this. But yeah, right now it's 11. I can't stop. I love it so much. It's so good. It makes me so happy. Literally whenever I'm not watching it, I wish I were watching it. And it's just on my mind all the time. I'm just obsessed, okay? I don't think I'm hurting anyone. <laughs> so it's fine oh god okay maybe this is a question i should have <laughs> prepared beforehand but bex asked me explain your booktube journey in t swift songs okay let me go to my taylor swift playlist to 
figure this out. Oh god. <laughs> okay, so starting off, we're gonna start with Treacherous because I was very nervous starting my channel and like I was very excited when I posted my first video, but it felt like a turning point for me. Like I started my channel right at the beginning of COVID and I was very stressed all the time and when I decided to post my first video like I don't know I kind of felt like I was taking a risk even though even if like nothing good had come out of the channel like it's not like it would have affected my life in a negative way like it just wouldn't have been successful and I would have moved on but it just felt very scary to me and it felt like a big step so I'll say treacherous was the beginning. Then I'm gonna say, this is more about my personal life, more than my booktube channel, but I'm gonna say right where you left me. If you know, you know, because of something that happened very soon after I started my channel, like two months in, and I think it affected my channel just because it affected me emotionally, which I think also affected my channel. So I'm gonna say right where you left me. <laughs> oh, also kind of going along with that, this is very sad. <laughs> But going along with that, I'll say tied together with a smile because I think I did a pretty good job hiding my feelings during that time. And when I filmed videos, I think I seemed okay. Except in my vlogs, I don't think I seemed okay in my vlogs, but in my like sit down videos, I think I seemed okay when I really was not okay. Especially because in the vlog where I read The Poppy War, one of the worst days of my life, but I kind of pulled it together and filmed that vlog. It was a 24 hour readathon. And so I'll say tied together with a smile because I was smiling for the camera, but <laughs> I was really not doing well, which I'm really proud of looking back on. Like, how did I get through that? I do not know, but I'll say that to represent doing the Taylor Swift playlist-a-thon, which if you haven't been around that long, in my first year of doing booktube, I hosted a Taylor Swift themed readathon with my besties, Lisa and Casey. And that was just, so much fun and that was like the first big thing I did on booktube and that's how me Lisa and Casey got really close so to represent that whole experience I'll use it's nice to have a friend because now they're two of my best friends in the whole world and that experience just brought us really close and oh my god <laughs> I love them so much I wouldn't be here if it weren't for them so I'm gonna use that to represent that whole experience. Then I'll use uh, today was a fairy tale for when I hit 1k because that just felt unreal to me. It really did feel like a fairy tale because I thought when I started my channel like the most I would reach was maybe a hundred. Like I, I thought like if I can get to a hundred subscribers like that would be a huge accomplishment, which it is like hitting 100 subscribers was a huge accomplishment, but hitting 1k it felt like it would never happen. So when it did happen, that was just, amazing and an unreal feeling. <laughs> then like to represent all the friends I've made on booktube I'll use I'm only me when I'm with you because all the friends I've made like I just feel like I can be my true self around them. I never feel like I'm masking or hiding anything like I just feel very close to them even though we've never met each other which hopefully we will one day but yeah I just feel like I'm my truest self when I do live shows with them and sprints or with Lisa and Casey if we're just on a zoom call so yeah. And then just to represent where I am now and kind of to encompass my whole journey, I'll use this is me trying. <laughs> because like I said, I've gone through some pretty awful things during the course of my channel and I have never stopped trying to keep this channel going. I have had to take breaks sometimes, but this is me trying to do my best and, you know, take care of myself. But I mean, obviously doing booktube is a in a way self-care because I love it so much, but I'm just always trying. I'm just always trying to do my best. So that's my journey, my booktube journey in Taylor Swift songs. Thank you, Bex, for that complicated question. <laughs> then Bex also asked what the best flavor of donut is. I don't like donuts. <laughs> the only donut I will eat is like the plain ones with like no glaze, no icing, nothing. I don't want anything. I just want, what are you doing? I just want a plain donut. I don't know what the flavor is called, like old fashioned or something. I don't know, but that's the only donut I will eat. I don't, I don't like donuts, I'm sorry. Then Nitty asked, first she asked, how are you? I miss you. I miss you too, Nitty. <laughs> I love you so much and I'm glad that you have kind of come back to booktube, but I'm doing good, you know, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, okay, so then Nitty also asked my least favorite and my favorite booktube video I posted. Um, my favorite videos I think always involve other people. 
So like the Heartstopper video with my friend Salma, like I loved that video so much. I loved editing it because like there was so much footage, first of all, like the video is 51 minutes. So just imagine how much raw footage I had to go through, but it was all enjoyable to watch because I love her obviously. And I love Heartstopper and I loved watching our reactions over and over again. And like the videos I've done with my friend Kylie, those were really fun and with my brother and also like the announcement video for the Taylor Swift playlist-a-thon because I was just so excited about that. The Spongebob video I did is still one of my favorites. <laughs> I know I'm naming a lot because I don't really have one favorite. I still really like the driver's license video I did, recommending books for if you like driver's license by Olivia Rodrigo. And one of my first videos was the books and makeup tag and I kind of wish I did that video like now when I had more people to watch it because that video is really funny. Like I know nothing about makeup and I did my makeup while doing the books and makeup tag and it just <laughs> I should watch that video again because it's really funny but yeah those are some of my favorites and then least favorites I don't really have a least favorite like I always feel proud of any video I do I'm sure there are some vlogs that I'm yeah there's definitely some vlogs that I'm like oh that probably wasn't my best just because of like whatever was going on in that vlog and I, if I didn't have enough to film or I don't know so probably a vlog but I don't know. I don't have a specific video in mind because I'm proud of all of them. I mean I guess my fir very first video like when I reacted to it last year I remember how uncomfortable I was in that video so but it's but I'm also proud of that one because it was my first one so I don't really have an answer I'm sorry. <laughs> okay so Anya sent another question she asked have you always loved reading and the answer is yes, but if you don't know my reading journey, let me go through it quickly. Basically, since I was a kid, I was obsessed with reading. I was always reading. I would wake up early sometimes, read before school. I would read during recess and during lunch and read before I go to bed. Like, I read all the time. And then I went through a period basically from when I was 15 until a few years ago so for like four or five years I barely read I would read maybe one or two books in a year and I always like during that period I always wanted to get back into reading and I would say like oh in the summer like I'll read so much like once I was done school and then I wouldn't and there wasn't really a reason like I just couldn't read for whatever reason and then a few years ago like I really really wanted to get back into reading and I asked my friend Salma for some book recommendations because she reads a lot <laughs> she reads more than anyone I know and so she gave me some and then I found booktube and here we are now so I did have a period of time where I just kind of lost my love for reading for a bit but now I'm back in it obviously and I'm very we're very happy together. <laughs> so someone asked when am I graduating? I technically I guess can you say you graduated if like the ceremony hasn't happened yet? Because I think I can say that I just finished my bachelor's degree and like literally yesterday I got my last grade back so like I know I've passed everything so I think I could say I've officially graduated my bachelor's degree. I am doing a master's next year, so I'm not done school yet, but I have graduated, I think. And then they also asked what degree I will have. So I did a master's in communication studies and a minor in film studies. So that was my bachelor's degree. <laughs> okay, and Bex also asked, how many bookshelves do I have? So I have, if you've seen my bookshelf reorganization video, you've seen all my bookshelves, but I have, I think I have three full ones. So I have this one, there's one in front of me, and there's also one in my hallway. Then there's like some shelves throughout my house that I have books on, but I have like three full bookshelves. Okay, Sid asked a few questions. She asked, what's your favorite location you've traveled to? <sighs> That's really hard. I think my favorite place I've been is Venice in Italy. I just love, I've been there twice now and there's just something about it. I love it so much it's so beautiful and the food is obviously amazing so I think that's my favorite so Sid sent a question she said what do you love about yourself and then she also said go back and answer the self-love question please because <laughs> she knows me she knows I might have ignored it so I will answer your question Sid so what is the question what do I love about myself this is hard <laughs> Okay, I'll go through, I'll go for one like physical thing and one like personality thing. So one thing I do love about like my appearance is my hair. I love my hair. This is my natural hair color. I've never dyed it and I've always loved this color. I don't know. I like, I kind of want to dye my hair one day just, just to do it for fun. But I also don't want to lose this color because I really love it. So I love my hair and it's also very thick. I don't know. And then in terms of my personality, I know people are going to make fun of me for saying this because this is kind of a meme now, but I'm a very empathetic person. I'm an empath, okay? Um, but it's true. <laughs> 
I know people make fun of people who say that now, but it's true, like, I am a very empathetic person, and I think that's a good thing, but it could also be a bad thing, <laughs> because, like, obviously it's good to be empathetic towards other people, but sometimes it could be my downfall, because literally if anyone, like, my mood depends so much on the mood of others, so if someone is in a bad mood, I will most likely be in a bad mood, but then the good thing is, if someone is in a good mood, then that will definitely help my mood, so it's kind of a double-edged sword but I do like that I'm an empathetic person because I think it's better to be empathetic than just unkind and mean and not be sympathetic towards others so I do like that about myself <laughs> Sid you're making me struggle <laughs> then Sid also asked my favorite book of the year so far let me just get it here so my favorite book of the year so far is The Chandler Legacies by Abdi Nazemian. I need everyone to read this book, okay? I loved it so much and I don't even like, I don't know how to explain why I loved it so much. I just, through the whole book, I didn't want to put it down. I was interested in what was going on. I loved all the characters. I just love this book. I don't know. And obviously this is an arc, but it is out now. So you should go pick it up. I love it so much. Here you go. <laughs> okay, then Lachlan asked me a few questions. So she asked my comfort book. Stranger Dreamer, my favorite book of all time. Another one, which I know is a weird answer, but whatever, it's my comfort book, is One Day in December by Josie Silver. I've read that book three times now. I reread it every December and it just, I don't know, I love it. It gives me comfort. I did, the first time I read it was when I was like in a really stressed time and it really like calmed me down. Like the audiobook just kind of calmed me down, took my mind off of things. So it does remind me of that time. So I think that's why. And then some obvious answers, Heartstopper, obviously, and the Tea Dragon Society series, obviously. So those are some of them. And then favorite contemporary romance. I think I would say The Charm Offensive. I'm just thinking. I think so. Because I'm every other romance I'm thinking of are fantasy. So I think The Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran. I love this book so much. One of my favorite books of last year. Both of these books are pretty underrated. So please go pick them up. Thank you. Then she asked my favorite gay fantasy. Ooh. I think I would say Priory of the Orange Tree. The main relationship in that book is sapphic. Oh well, but we don't know. Well, Legendborn also, where is it? I would also maybe say Legendborn, but like nothing, there hasn't been like a queer relationship yet, I don't think. But I'm still hoping for a poly relationship between the ma three main characters, so I'm really hoping for that to happen. I could also say A.M. Strickland's books, so Beyond the Black Door and In the Ravenous Dark, because those are very queer fantasies. But those books also don't focus so much on the relationships where, like, well, I guess Priory doesn't either. I don't know. This is hard. <laughs> But I get to go with Priory for now, but those are all honorable mentions, I guess. Then she has my favorite Brandon Sanderson, which is also hard because I really like Way of Kings, but I think I liked Skyward more? But I also read Skyward a while ago, so I don't know if I would feel, I don't know if I would like it as much. I'll say Skyward, but I do love Way of Kings, so I don't know. <laughs> so then someone asked my favorite movie I've watched this year. The Batman. <laughs> I love that movie so much. I think I would have to watch it again, but I feel safe to say it's one of my favorite movies ever. Like I loved it so much. I love it so much. It's so good. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Do not be deterred by the three hour runtime. It does not feel like three hours in my opinion. I loved it so much. I can't wait to watch it again. That's my favorite like new movie I've seen this year. Honorable mention goes to Encanto obviously. I love it. I've also watched, this is a rewatch obviously, but it's one of my favorite movies, but 1917. I love that movie so much and I watched it again at the beginning of the year and for one of my film studies classes for my final I made a fake movie trailer for 1917 and I can't post it because I would definitely get copyrighted for that, but I turned it into like a romantic drama and I did pretty well and I'm pretty proud of it. So just wanted to mention that. <laughs> so those are all the questions I got on Instagram. So now I'll go to Twitter. So Rachel asked me a bunch of questions. Thank you, Rachel. I love you. <laughs> but first she asked, would you rather only be able to watch Heartstopper or never watch Heartstopper again? Only be able to watch Heartstopper. That's an easy, easy decision. I cannot even fathom never watching it again. It's one of my favorite shows ever now. Obviously, I've watched it 11 times and I will continue to watch it for the rest of my life. Like, can you imagine never watching it again? 
I don't care. Like, I know I will miss some of the other things that I don't get to watch anymore, but I have to, I have to. <laughs> so that's easy. Fave video games. So I'm not uh, like a huge gamer or anything, and most of the games I like are like cozy games. So if you're a dude bro watching this, Whatever, I don't care about your opinion, but my favorite game, I think my favorite game ever is Undertale. I love that game so much. I really want to replay it because it's been a few years, but that game is so beautiful. Like the story is so good. The music is amazing and it's just really funny, but also really like it hits you in the feels and like despite everything, you're still you. <laughs> I'm gonna cry thinking about that, but I love that game. So that's probably my favorite. I also love Cozy Grove has been like a big thing for me lately on my Switch. Obviously I love Animal Crossing. I love Stardew Valley. I do love Breath of the Wild, but I always have to take breaks because I get so stressed playing that game. <laughs> I don't like stressful games, okay? So, but I do love that game and it's beautiful, of course. And I also have to say Portal and Portal 2. It's been like at least 10 years since I played those, but those were so much fun, Portal and Portal 2. So I'll say those and I think those are my favorite ones. I don't know if I'm missing anything, but I think those are my favorites. The place I want to travel next, I would really love, well, first of all, I would love to travel to meet my besties, but in terms of like a vacation, I would love to go to Greece or Scotland. I think those are like two, the two big ones for me, Greece or Scotland. I really want to go. <laughs> Can you find Strange the Dreamer on your shelves blindfolded? If you're asking like if I could just go to my shelf and find it, then yes, because it's right here. <laughs> so it's very easy to find. But if you're saying like if there were a bunch of, of my books and I was blindfolded and I had to figure out which one was Strange the Dreamer, I'm quite sure I could. I really feel like I would know it if I was holding Strange the Dreamer. I don't know. It has a very distinct like shape and feel to it in my opinion. <laughs> Ooh, my favorite lover, reputation, and feeler, fear, my favorite lover, reputation, and fearless song. Okay, let's go see. Actually, I don't know why I'm looking because I know the answers, I think. My favorite lover song is Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince. I love that song so much. I feel like it's underrated. Like, I'm surprised that's not everyone's favorite song. I love it. I love like the meaning of the song and I just love the music and the the tune and everything. I don't know. I love that song. Where were the other ones? Reputation, Getaway Car, one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs of all time. I love that song so much. Easy peasy. And then Fearless. Wait, let me go look at Fearless. I think it's You're Not Sorry. It used to be Hey Steven, like when Fearless first came out and when I was younger. I loved Hey, I mean, I still love Hey Steven, but I think now it's You're Not Sorry. It's just a beautiful song. I also love Breathe, but I think those are my answers. And then she just wrote, please talk about Spongebob. I don't know what you want me to say. I love Spongebob. <laughs> Spongebob is so funny and one of my favorite shows. <laughs> Obviously more so like the older episodes. I haven't seen a new Spongebob episode in a very long time, but it's just really funny. I don't know what you want me to talk about. Should we sing a song? A Spongebob song? Oh, we should sing the campfire song song. Okay, ready? <clears throat> Let's gather around the campfire and sing our campfire song. Our C-A-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G song. And if you don't think that we can sing it faster, then you're wrong. Cause it'll help if you just sing along. Bom, bom, bom. C-A-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G song. <laughs> Yes, the witchy song. And if you don't think that we can sing it faster than your rock, is it'll help if you just sing along. It'll help. It'll help if you just sing along. Oh yeah. <laughs> so there you go. You're welcome for that. <laughs> okay, so Sasha asked me what's been the biggest challenge since starting BookTube, and. Honestly, besides like all the personal things that have happened in my personal life that have kind of affected my video making abilities, but just like my belief in myself, I'm also just, I'm really bad at like, I often compare myself to others. So people who started either after me or at the same time as me and then they grew faster than me. Like I always take that like personally, like I always seem to think like, well, they're doing something right and I'm doing something wrong. When really like there's so much that goes into 
your growth on YouTube because of the algorithm and whatnot. So one thing um, that I'm still working on is to not take everything so personally. Like if a video flops, it's not a reflection on me. It has to do with so many factors. So I guess the biggest challenge for me is just like my belief in myself because I do take things so personally, but I'm working on it and I don't know. Hopefully it'll be fine one day. Okay, Anya asked me some more questions on Twitter. So thank you so much, Anya, for these questions. So what's the most rewarding thing about BookTube? Hands down, the friends I've made. Like, the, the friendships... <laughs> oh my god, I could get emotional talking about it, but the friendships I've made, like, I cannot imagine my life without these friends and just knowing that they're there for me and they have my back is just, it just means so much and it's definitely the best part about starting my channel is the friends I've made, so I would say that. The hardest thing I've learned through booktube, kind of similar to what I just said, but just learning that not to take things so personally and it's really hard to grow your channel and so much of it has to do with luck and that's been pretty hard pill to swallow sometimes because like I said I just take things so personally so has your reading taste changed since joining I would say yes kind of I mean when I started like my main genre was YA fantasy and I would say that's still my main genre that's still what I'm mostly drawn to but I also read way more contemporaries now I've started reading romance I've started reading mystery thrillers and I really want to get into more like literary fiction books so it's not so much my reading taste has changed it's just that there's more that I'm interested in now than just YA fantasy <laughs> Okay, Lois asked my favorite holiday destination. So like I said, the favorite place I've been is Venice, but like growing up every summer my family would go to Maine and I haven't been in like five years because for a few years I couldn't go because I was working, then I couldn't go because of COVID and this summer we're hoping to go and that has that place has a lot of good memories for me. So I'm really hoping I could go this year, but I love that place just because like, you know, I've been so many times, it's like, it was always like the most exciting parts of my summer. So <laughs> Steph asked me, why am I the best dad? Because you just are Steph. You're just my best father. <laughs> I love you so much. It's just because of who you are. I don't know. Okay, Casey, <laughs> Casey asked me a couple questions. She asked, when Lisa and I come to Quebec eventually, where is the first place you're taking us and the first thing we're doing? So I feel like the first thing we have to do is go eat some poutine. I don't know if you guys have even had poutine before, but we have to go get some because if you have had it, it's not as good as it is here, okay? We make the best poutine here in Quebec. <laughs> So I won't tell you where we're going because I don't want to say names of places, but I have a place in mind. <laughs> so we'll go there. We'll also go to Tim Hortons. And I feel like I need to take you somewhere where they're going to speak French just so I can make myself feel good about my French, even though my French is not that great. But I want to impress you guys. <laughs> so we'll do that. She also asked any plans for my channel. I don't really have like set plans. I do have a lot of ideas for videos that I just need to like because most of my video ideas are like reading vlogs like themed reading vlogs and <sighs> like I just have to do them but we all know how I am with like secret TBRs and stuff so those are my plans I just don't know when I'm gonna do them but it's fine. I also would love to host another readathon but I just don't know what yet and she also asked are you gonna include more film discussions? I would love to do that so if you, like I mentioned, like I minored in film studies. I'm a big film nerd. I love film. Film was my first love before reading. And I would still say, do I prefer film over books? I would maybe say yes. Please don't hate me. I would love to have more videos about film, but it depends on what you guys want. Cause I did make one, like my favorite films of all time. That video kind of flopped. <laughs> even though I loved making it. But if you guys want to see more videos about films, please let me know because I would love to do that. Okay, so then Lisa asked maybe my favorite question. She asked me to rank all of Taylor Swift's track five songs from least favorite to favorite. So we're gonna do that. So let me just look up her track five songs because I do not know them by heart. <laughs> Ooh, okay, okay, all right, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I'm looking at them all. Okay, so I'm gonna rank them from worst, or I guess least favorite to favorite because none of these songs are bad. I love all of Taylor Swift's songs, really. So please don't judge my ranking. So in last place, I will say The Archer from Lover. I know like so many people love this song and I really like this song, okay? I love Taylor Swift, <laughs> do not get mad at me. But 
it's not my favorite. I find it kind of like, it's not very dynamic, I find. So like when I listen to it, I love it, but I'm never like, oh God, I gotta put Archer, the Archer on, you know? So that's probably my least favorite. Okay, people are gonna get mad at me for this one. But next would probably be Tolerated <laughs> from Evermore. Another song that everyone loves. It's like one of their favorite songs from Evermore. And for me, like, I like it, okay? It's a great song. It's, it, the lyrics are amazing, but it's just not one of my favorites. So I'll put that next. Then I'll put Cold As You from her debut album. But I love that song. It's a great song, but I guess it has to go next because there's some songs that I love more. Then I'll put White Horse, which again, I feel like will get me in trouble, but I still love it, okay? It's an iconic Taylor Swift song. It's just not my favorite. Then probably All You Had To Do Was Stay from 1989, but that song's a bop. <laughs> Like, honestly, that's one of my favorite songs from 1989. It's a bop, okay? But that will go next. So then Delicate from Reputation, a great song, honestly. I mean, everyone loves that song, and for good reason. I think I'm missing three. Oh god, but I love all these songs. Okay. <laughs> then I think, so number three would be Dear John. Yeah. Even though, again, I love that song so much, but it's just not, there's two that I prefer more. So number two would be My Tears Ricochet from Fol Folklore. That song is great and that song really like that's a song that really grew on me after folklore came out like i always loved it and it was really after watching like the long pond studio sessions that i was like whoa <laughs> this song is so good it makes me very emotional but i love that song and then number one obviously is all too well <laughs> i mean specifically the 10 minute version but even just the regular snack size version will do it's just her her best written song like, there's no debate about it. I'm sorry. So there you go, Lisa. You can get mad at me if you want. Then someone asked me if I believe in ghosts. <laughs> I really don't know. I believe... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to answer this because, like, my first, like, instinct is no. But then I've heard, like, you hear ghost stories and sometimes I'm like, how can they not be real after hearing something like that? So I don't know. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to answer this. Yes, but no, I don't know. The answer is I don't know, okay? <laughs> it's too stressful. Ooh, top five recommendations from your favorite genre. So my favorite genre is YA fantasy, so Stranger Dreamer, and obviously Muse of Nightmares, In the Ravenous Dark, Beyond the Black Door, Legendborn, and, ooh, and An Ember in the Ashes. There you go. Okay, favorite booktubers. <laughs> There's no way I... <sighs> Okay, first of all, obviously all my friends, I love them. They're such creative people and they inspire me so much. So Lisa from With Love Lisa, Casey from Casey Can Read, Rachel from Let Me In The Library, Amanda from Ginger Snapped Reads, Sasha from The Redhead Reader, Steph from Stephanie Bookish, Sid from Sid Bookworm, The Roomies, um, Christine and Mo from The Roomies Digest, Jayla from Lala Loves Lit, Jess from Books Past Bedtime, Sarah from Sarah's Shelves. There's no way I'm gonna, oh my god, I'm gonna leave people out. I don't wanna leave anyone out. Oh, Jan from Jan Agaton. Stunning, amazing, beautiful, never done before. Oh, Noelle from Noelle Seven Pages. Rita from Life Worth Reading. Nitty from Nitty Ready Reads. I feel like I'm for sure forgetting people. Oh God, this is too stressful. And I also love like some people that, you know, I'm not like super close with or maybe have never even spoken to, but I also love obviously Kayla from Books and Lala, my queen. <laughs> and I love Brit from Basically Brit. I love Chloe from Books with Chloe. Haley from Pages of Haley. One of my favorites, honestly, she's an icon. I love her. Oh God, there's so many. Oh, Ashley from Ashley's Little Library. There's just so many. I can't, I'm, there's no way I'm not forgetting someone. So I'm just gonna stop there because I'm overwhelmed. Okay, so someone asked my favorite book of all time, Stranger Dreamer. Love it, my whole identity. And am I enjoying booktube? Of course, <laughs> I love it so much. I am very grateful for it. One of the best things in my life. Okay, so we'll end with this person because they asked a lot of questions. So first they asked, how many languages can I speak? I speak two. I speak English and French. I am fluent-ish in both. French, like, it's hard because me compared to like people I meet, you know, at work and stuff, my French is not the greatest, but like, I feel like I'm still considered fluent in French. So I speak two. <laughs> Have you ever read a complete book in another language that you're na then your native or national language? Yes, because I learned French in school and had a lot of French classes. And so I've read many books in French that were all in French. 
So yes, the shortest time you've read a book in like an hour, I guess, if you're talking about graphic novels. I can read them usually in an hour or less. If we're talking about like a novel, probably a few hours. <laughs> I'm not a super fast reader, but when I do like 24 hour readathons, I can finish a book in a few hours usually. I guess it depends, but I'll say between an hour and a few hours. And then have you ever read any book by a South Asian, especially Pakistani author? So I'm quite sure, I know Saba Tahir is South Asian, I'm quite sure she's Pakistani. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm quite sure. She's definitely the first one to come to mind. I need to get better at learning like where the authors I read from, where they come from, because I think that like knowing those things helps you know like if you want to read more diversely then it helps you knowing like from which countries you should read more from. If Did that make any sense? So. Saba to here, definitely yes. I feel like there's more that I just don't know. If anyone has any recommendations, please let me know. I feel like I've definitely read from a few other ones. I just, I need to get better at knowing where the authors I'm reading from are from. But yeah, let me know if you have any recommendations who are your favorite South Asian authors. But yeah, I'm gonna end it there. Thank you to anyone who sent in a question and thank you again for all your support over these past two years. And let me know if you have any answers to some of these questions. I would love to know, but yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon with another video soon. Bye! Bye.